morning everyone alan day here i'm just going to give things a few minutes as or hopefully not a few minutes but a minute or two for um for a, a last few to to jump on the call and then we'll get going but thank you for uh for the morning start and i'm looking forward to chatting with each of you about um supplier management business case so i'll just go on mute for a few seconds while we wait for for the last few strugglers to join So good morning, everyone. I'm Alan Day. I'm CEO and founder of State of Flux. I, I see a few names I recognize um, on the list this morning. So thank you very much for coming along. And thank you for all those new people I haven't yet uh, spoken to or met. Uh, hopefully we will do soon. So today, really, I'm, I'm going to cover, as, the, as it says on the tin, the essentials of a supplier management business case. Um, but we're also going to talk about the value proposition that that feeds into that. So, so that's the plan. Uh, before I start, and I'm just going to um, really spend a, a few minutes introducing State of Flux for those of you who don't know us. Um, I won't spend a huge amount of time on it, um, but I am happy to answer questions at the end. And the format will be that uh, I'll do my best. It's quite a few slides here. I'll do my best to stick to um, to 30 minutes and then uh, at the end of it uh, we'll have 10 to 15 minutes of questions although I do see a question uh, popping up right now um, Agatha you're saying you can't hear me uh, could anyone else pop on the chat if if you can hear me hopefully you can and uh, we can go back to Agatha maybe Jen if you could uh, Ping Agatha there, please. Anyway, while, while we're trying to sort that one out, and hopefully everyone else can hear, uh, very quickly on, on State of Flux, we're very much about supplier management uh, and all things to do with that. So covering things like onboarding, supplier relationship management, supplier performance management, risk, um, supplier innovation, contract management, and ESG and specifically around sustainability, modern slavery, diversity and inclusion. So uh, very much those topics and we support our customers in technology, training, consulting and managed services. So uh, very quickly about us and the reason I can stand here with some uh, uh, surety and talk to you is for the last 13 years, we're in, into year 14, um, uh, we've been doing these annual global pieces of research. Uh, so we're now over 3 million data points from 3,000 organizations. We're in the middle of the 14th. If you haven't done it, um, it's just srmsurvey.com. srmsurvey.com. Please go ahead and do it. Um, it's completely confidential. It's free. Uh, and you get a benchmark afterwards. So, um, uh, yeah, certainly, um, please, please do it. I will hassle you at the end of this as well. But that, as I said, that gives us around about 3 million data points, uh, which gives us pretty good insights on what's happening. Um, and a very quick snapshot. I know I see a number of our uh, clients attending today, but um, but certainly this gives you a bit of a snapshot on some of the clients that we, we work with over the years. Um, 
Right, to just kick into it, to get us all on the same page, I just want to pop up the definition that we have for supply management, and we will come back to this, but uh, for me, it's pretty key to define what you mean by supply management. For us, this is a discipline of working collaboratively with those suppliers that are vital to the success of both organizations to maximize mutual value of those relationships. And I just want to pick out a few points. You can see we've highlighted six there, but, but for me, a couple of the points that I'm going to raise. The first one in terms of discipline. So uh, one of the things I see, and it's quite common, is that the relationships are relying on an individual as opposed to it being structured, rigorous, consistent, and measurable. Um, and not just the relationship, but the entire supply management program for me needs to be that. So we talk about, is it is it industrial strength uh, supplier management? You know, is it consistent across your organization? Um, so that's one. The other one that I wanted to pull out was vital to the success. So clearly not every supplier is going to be vital to your success. But definitely there are groups, you know, from strategic, critical, the diverse, the innovative, all of those need to have what we call a treatment strategy on how you're going to deal with them and so on. So um, just a couple of points to pull out, but it hopefully gets us all on the same page in terms of what we're talking about around supplier management. And over the 18 years that State of Flux has been going, 18 and a half years, um, we've seen a number of kind of key points that organizations struggle with. And again, I'm not going to read all of these out. You will get the slides after this presentation. But a, a few key points for me are the first one, and, it, and we kind of just covered it on the slide before, but defining and communicating what supplier management is and what it means to your business is pretty key. Sounds simple, but um, pretty key. Um, and we're going to touch on this a lot in this presentation, but, but getting your sales pitch and practicing your sales pitch for supplier management is pretty, pretty um, important. Um, I, one of the things that I would say is this is so, a business change program led by procurement, not a procurement change program. So I'll repeat that because I think it's very important. Supplier management is a business change program led by procurement, not a procurement change program. Uh, so part of that is uh, getting the wider business on board. And I see when procurement takes a lead, one of the things that we do wrong is that we run straight to process and we don't take the execs and the operational stakeholders with us. So for me, that's one that's that's pretty critical is making sure you're taking your key stakeholders with, with you. And you'll see on the bottom of the left-hand column, writing processes, policies, and guides in procurement speak. So we've really got to talk the business's language as well uh, for this. You'll see, you'll see a few um, other points in there which hopefully resonate. Getting segmentation wrong, uh, we'll, we'll, um, we won't cover that. We, we have a separate webinar on segmentation, but um, uh, that is one that people, people do. So on our annual surveys, I think it's in the high 90s that people tell us they do supply segmentation, but generally is pretty poorly done, I hate to say. So some opportunity for improvement for all of all of you. So these are just a few of the common pitfalls. Um, and again, I'm happy to answer questions at the end of this. For those of you who don't know us, um, you'll also know, well, you won't know, sorry, that we, uh, we look at kind of supply management around kind of six key pillars. Um, and if you do the survey, which I'd encourage you to do, you will get your results broken out on these six key pillars. Um, and again, the six key pillars, so we're looking for value are we, um, in, in terms of clear business case, 
and are you delivering to that? So that's the topic that we're going to cover today. Um, you know, and then we'll look at sort of engagement. So have we got our key stakeholders involved? Have we got the the um, wider business and the executives? And have we got even the suppliers? And it's amazing how many people's supplier management programs forget that the supplier is a key stakeholder. Governance and process. So this is where we're looking at kind of segmentation, treatment strategies, process policy, governance structure, um, and even even the um, it moves nicely from that into org charts, people, people design, um, roles and responsibilities, training, uh, and then and then underpinning this with technology, and we'll see collaboration as a bit of an output. So we have a journey that that um, we encourage our clients and organizations who are looking to either improve or start their supplier management programs. So again, we're focusing on creating that business case, which is the second piece. Um, the first piece is to understand where you are right now. Um, so, so what's your current state? What's your future state? And also, we call it a voice of the supplier, but measuring whether you're a customer of choice for your key suppliers. Um, so that's understanding why would you get the A team, the scarce resource, the preferential pricing from your key suppliers. So getting your suppliers to rank, how important um, criteria are, how does your organization stack up against those criteria versus your key competitors. So pretty important. So that's the customer of choice. And the output of those two go into what we're discussing today, which is that value proposition and business case. I'll pause for a second. I'll let you think and please pop questions into the into the question bar uh, so that we can get going. And then again, if you're putting your hands up, um, uh, when I've when I've raced through these slides, I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions at the end. So so this is where we're going to focus but um, you can see it's all part of a, a, a longer journey. Uh, so, so we break this kind of supply management business case into three areas, the value proposition, the strategy, which is, as I said, really the output of the current state assessment and um, customer choice measurement, and then the business case. So I'm gonna run through all three of these, although the first and the third, I will spend more time on um, the set of the, topic in the middle is quite a big a big point so value proposition one of the key things that we um we find is actually how do you how do you kind of link it to your business objectives so so the first thing is actually defining what supplier management is and it's amazing when we go into organizations what what perceptions you get not just not just in the business but even within the procurement function itself You'll get some people that think supplier management means supplier performance management, and it's all around KPIs. Some people who think supplier management means that you're going to take the supplier out to dinner or that you meet with them monthly. Uh, some people think it's supplier risk management, and I know financial services tends to, to err uh, around risk, if anything. Uh, other people think it's around supplier innovation management. Um, or collaboration and so you get you get this real spectrum of what it is and and you need to define it for your organization it may be all of those things it may be a subset of those things but but actually getting that definition and linking it back to your core business objectives um, we think is absolutely key and you can see that we talk about creating that kind of clear line of sights between business objectives and supplier management my my simple tip and one of the things we do is just go to our clients annual reports and you'll always see a statement from the chairman and from the ceo talking about the the future goals um, and what we want to do is make sure that that supplier management program is helping the organization achieve those future goals so linking it to the the goals and objectives of your corporate it sounds simple but it's amazing how many people don't do it. And, it. and I'll keep repeating, this has to be a business change program. 
So uh, very quickly, if we look at that value proposition and we look at last year's um, research around do people have a documented value proposition, um, what we'll see is actually it's roughly half and half. Uh, half the people have put some time and effort into it. Um, as you say, 45% haven't, haven't yet done that. Um, it's a little scary that 8% are completing the survey but don't know if there's a business case uh, in there as well. So, um, so that just gives you some insight in terms of where the market is. If, if you don't have one, start thinking about what, what is your definition and what is that kind of value proposition. And of course, the, the, the challenge which we're all here today to talk about is how do we move uh, that into uh, a, um, a, a business case. So what we start to do is start looking at how you create your sales pitch for, for that. Uh, and you'll see over the next, I think it's five slides, I'll talk to you about this, this creating the sales pitch. The first one is creating that overarching business, uh, business proposition um, and, and fine tuning it to, to that key, key message uh, and then breaking it down so that it then resonates for your different functions. And that might be making it resonate to, as I said, functional. So legal, marketing, IT, manufacturing, depending on the organization you're in, just tweaking it so that it, it, it aligns to that. Or equally, it could be to a business unit or a geographic unit. You know, does it resonate to EMEA or, or North America or um, a, different, a different operational business unit? So, so you take, I mean, these things sound very, very simple, but, but you're, you're, you're kind of taking your key message and breaking it down to make it applicable to each of your functions or, or operational units. But then I think the real trick is actually tuning it to your key stakeholder. And hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you things that you already know, but, but making that sales pitch and that message really resonate with the individual that you're, you're going to talk to. I'll repeat, you know, this is a business change program so we want stakeholders to invest time, effort, resource, even funds to help you get this program going. So you, you need to be able to show them at their level what is supplier management and what benefits they are going to get for it. How is it going to help them uh, achieve their goals and targets at an individual level? Um, so one of the techniques we use is a messaging house, um, and I'm not sure if people have come across these things before, but in terms of a messaging house, um, and I'll run quickly through it, but clearly you have your hero message, which is what, what we were talking about uh, in terms of the corporate one, and then you'll have different uh, focus points, stakeholder challenges, needs, and then often um, proof points. So how that folds through is we have a technique called 2220. So what's your 20 second pitch? I mean, everyone talks about your elevator pitch, but how could you talk about supplier management in 20 seconds to the CEO when you're stuck in the elevator with them? Um, what's your two minute pitch? And then what's your 20 minute pitch? So that's your 2220. My challenge for you on the call here is it's not just about doing this yourself everyone in your procurement function needs to be able to be consistent in this messaging. If you think about it, we are effectively selling change to the wider business. Um, and if we're not consistent in what we're selling, how do we expect the business to buy it? If procurement was a sales organization, we would have these pitches, we would practice them, we would video them, uh, we would keep rehearsing them until we were all consistent and standard. Clearly, we're not a, uh, a sales organization, but it is something I think as a procurement function we do. We do let ourselves down a bit in terms of giving these key consistent messages. Uh, I, I've kind of covered the value proposition piece um, and making sure you tie that back to your business objectives and your um, 
you're um, pulling that information out of your annual reports or your corporate objectives from there. As I mentioned before, the supplier strategy piece, so this is looking at the current state or, or in consulting speak, as is piece and the future. So where are you trying to get to? What's the roadmap between the two? Um, and then the suppliers piece, so you'll see on the bottom left-hand column, suppliers, what do suppliers think of you as a customer? For me, that's absolutely critical. Are you a customer of choice? So um, I would be, uh, uh, I would highly encourage that you, if you haven't yet done um, a measurement of customer of choice, come and talk to us uh, and we'll happily talk you through how we do it. But it's it's pretty pretty key, uh, especially if you're starting or resetting your supplier management journey. Um, so I'm just going to pause for a second because I do have a poll on that and around um, uh, I've mentioned are you starting or resetting your your journey? So I'm going to I'm just going to launch a poll for you all. Um, have a look in the in the chat bar, and I'll give you a minute or two. Uh, is your supply management program new for your business is it stalled and needs to be restarted um, or you have one already in place but you need further investment so uh, if you can uh, take the time to just have a quick vote I'll give you a minute or two i can see uh, see votes coming through it's interesting to see the mix I'll keep giving you a few minutes, um, or a few, a few more seconds, that is, sorry, not minutes. All right, you've got 10 seconds more. If you could make your final votes, please. Three, two, one, right. I will close the poll and I will feed back the poll. Hopefully you can all see. Um, but you'll see that 31% of the, the group today, it's new for your business. 20% it's stalled and need to be restarted. Half of you, or just roughly half of you, it's already in place, but it needs further investment. So that's that's a pretty interesting uh, uh, view. We will touch on it in the business case, which clearly is the next section I'm going to be running through. Um, the next question I'm going to give you, if that's okay, is, whoops, have you yet created a sales pitch for your supplier management program? So again, while you've got your fingers on the buttons, if you could, uh, if you could go ahead and vote, um, and let's see whether you've got a sales pitch yet. Uh, and there's a few answers there. Yes, but not communicated. Yes, but only to a core team and so on. Or no, but I need to. So have a go at that. I'll give you, uh, again, 60 seconds to uh, to have a good vote for that. Some interesting results. So we've sort of got, I'll give you kind of six, seven more seconds if we can. So three, two, one. I will close that uh, now and share the results with you. But this is it. This is interesting. Uh, so 41% no, but I need to. 13%. I'm I'm um I'm pleased to hear that, but but I think that's pretty high actually yes we've communicated it to all the business um and you, and 36 percent yes we've uh, communicated it but only to a core team and they were split evenly yes but not communicated and yes communicated to all the procurement of five percent each 
so that's that's interesting responses so we will try and cover some of that off um in my experience um when a program is stalled uh and you've got to restart it it takes a lot more selling so i'm sorry if i've labored the selling point this morning but it is pretty key when you've stalled a program um, it takes a lot more convincing because people are a bit more cynical once once a program stalls. Um, right, we will uh, I'll just share those results so that you can see, uh, and we will keep moving. So, supplier management business case. So, so we've we've got six key questions here for you. Um, you know, what's the issue and the problem definition? So, what what are we trying to uh, opportunities and risks that we're trying to address. Now, we find that the business case is is generally premised on three key things. It's it's sort of money, so so value or or cost. It's risk, and it's innovation. Those are the three key things. Um, we're starting to see sustainability, but arguably that can be uh, that can also be looked at from a risk perspective. So. Um, those are the areas that we see that are kind of key issues and problems. Uh, and then we'll look at the kind of current state, future states, um, project overview, cost benefit and recommendations. So I'm going to spend some time really just giving you some of the statistics and numbers uh, that you can use in your business case. So just to start off with some statistics, what we've seen over the 13 years, um, and in fact, we're seeing a similar trend in year 14 as well, is that those people who are good at supply management will typically get between three and 6% over and above what's been contracted with their third party suppliers. Now, that potentially is a very large number for your organization. What I would say is clearly you're not going to do supplier management across everyone. So um, you can't really extrapolate it out across 20,000 suppliers or whatever the number of suppliers you have, but you can certainly extrapolate it across some of the larger relationships that you have. So generally that number can be pretty big. Um, and when you when you look at the cost of setting up the program, you know, it, it's it's pretty uh, compelling that uh, business case. So that number has been consistent for 13 years. The other number that's been pretty consistent is the that between 30% and 50% of the deals you do in procurement don't hit the bottom line. So unless you're putting in supply management, those deals erode. So hopefully we can see both of those things in the graph below and some of you should or if you've read our material before should have seen this graph before but basically what we're saying is through your sourcing work and, and your good business engagement you're taking cost out um, with contract and risk management you'll achieve what it is if you don't put those things in place then this is the 30 to 50 percent of deals if you do, performance management gives you uh, incremental gains through continuous improvements, but supplier relationship management really gives you um, value over and above what you've contracted for. So this is kind of the new value. The red dotted line is when you you really beat up the supplier. And what, what we find is you'll get an, a, an initial gain um, but over time, the supplier is a bit like an elephant. They won't forget and they will crawl, crawl back any saving and a lot more over time. Or you'll find your service degrades because they can't afford to, to do it, uh, which will cost your business. So, so that's, um, that's how that graph works. And those are the numbers that really go with it, the 3 to, three to 6% and the 30 to 50% of deals done get lost. Um, so you see that, and, and if you're good at it, I, I'm talking about all organizations, if you're really good at it, the top, the top quartile of our supply management leaders are getting over 6% um, in the supply management. So, 
So the top of the top uh, are really good. Um, and 90% of them are getting what we call some customer choice benefits. And those I'm going to touch on in the next slide. So incremental value from supplier management. And what we're finding is this: these are the customer choice type benefits that we're starting to see. Um, and I'll, I'll read out some stats for you on that. So if, if you're an SRM leader, you are twice as likely to get the A team. Um, you are twice as likely to get preferential pricing. And in this marketplace, this is pretty important, but you're twice as likely to get scarce resource. The other thing that I, I find pretty compelling is you're three times as likely to get access to um, new innovation or innovation. Um, and the and the big one, and we only asked this question last year, but it but it was incredibly compelling was you if you're an SRM leader, your speed to market is five times um, better, five times faster speed to market. So so this point in this value creation piece around speed to market, uh, if you're an SRM leader, um, and it makes sense that um, you are you are really driving um, driving innovation through your suppliers. If you're an SRM leader, you'll be five times better than than the followers. So again, over the 13 years, um, or this is year 14, we've seen the gap between the leaders and the followers getting wider and wider around the customer of choice benefits. So um, pretty key to me. Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm happy to talk to you offline about some of these numbers, but hopefully you've kind of scribbled, scribbled them down and, and the recording will be there, but, but I can give you those numbers at any point. And then equally, I know we've got a, a, a range of, of industries on the, on the uh, call today, um, but I just pulled out a few for you in terms of interest. Um, so you see, I talked about the top 25% getting over, over um, 6%, it's the top 50%, almost, almost 50% get over 4%. So it is very compelling uh, in terms of that. And then, as I said, we've pulled out a few, I think we've got some oil and gas here. So we're seeing cost and risk benefits for 60% um, of oil, oil and gas. Um, tech and, and IT, um, financial services, we're seeing um, uh, one risk is a huge driver for them. Nearly 80% of financial services is, are solely focused on risk with, with most of them reporting that they're reducing risk through good supplier management. Um, and then I quite like uh, the fact that sort of two thirds of organizations um, are reporting better and more effective negotiation outcomes, which kind of makes sense. We, we, we view it as it's a bit like when you're negotiating with someone in your supplier management program, it's a bit like negotiating with a sibling. You know them better. You can probably be a little more brutal, but you're going to make sure that you can still live in the same house with them at the end of that negotiation, as opposed to some of the negotiations we've seen where really trying to uh, have a phoenix of a relationship rise out of the ashes of that negotiation is, is pretty tricky. So just a few numbers. Um, hopefully uh, uh, that resonates with the different industries that we've got. If I haven't touched on your industry, please again, just, just um, reach out at the end of this. And then the other thing that we look at is what are the kind of business drivers um, and how do people kind of link these to their business case? Uh, so we'll see for a long time, uh, cost was number one, but the pandemic uh, and, and things like Ukraine and the Suez Canal have, have made risk and resilience number one uh, there. So 63% so are really focusing on risk, um, just under half around cost and reduction or cost avoidance. Uh, and we're, we're seeing innovation coming up all the time 
on that. So, so these are kind of drivers that the people are looking for out of their supplier management programs. Some tips, uh, as I said, you know, because of because of the challenges in COVID, the the port challenges, the the Suez Canal challenge, the Ukraine challenge, um, the these items are on your board's agenda. Um, I found it really interesting that 80% of our respondents last year um, were relying on the relationship to mitigate supplier disruptions or risk disruptions, yet only 12% of organizations are um, considered a supplier management leader. So, um, so if you're not in that leadership group, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I would just make a point of don't waste a good crisis on that. I mentioned at the top of the call that most of the business cases are driven around risk, value, innovation, and sustainability. And again, I would encourage you to orientate your business case and use the numbers that we've talked about to help you get those, those through. Um, so that is hopefully uh, kind of covers that. In terms of just a quick summary, you know, from the supply management value proposition, make sure that you know you're quite broad reaching when you look at the value you've you've aligned it to the business needs you've created that sales pitch and you've definitely engaged the wider business um for the supplier management strategy you know understanding your as is your your to be um the vision getting your executive sponsorship and the stakeholders and you'll see that we you know we we keep reinforcing the stakeholder piece from there um and I, I, for me, on that part is understanding whether you're a customer of choice is pretty key. And then finally, creating that business case, again, engaging stakeholders and getting the business case improved. So those, those are the kind of the three key points to go through that. Uh, we're finding the numbers are pretty compelling. I, I mentioned the three to six percent financial benefit and the softer benefits. Often for the business cases we're doing with clients, those numbers become so big that we actually use, you know, a percentage of them. So we'll use sort of one percent as opposed to three percent. Just, just otherwise, it, it, it looks too compelling. So um, you'll need to right size it for your organisation, but certainly those numbers have been consistent over the years. Um, and I will encourage you, as I said, to do our um, annual global survey. You'll see here's an example of one um, uh, where we can see the leaders, the followers, their um, their results uh, from uh, which happens to be the red lines. This particular organisation believes, and bear in mind this is a self-assessment, that they have everyone in their organisation aligned and behind them um, and uh, but yet their governance and structure is very poor so uh, so they've got some work on work ons to do um, and so this gives you kind of where you would sit and what you need to work on in terms of your current state it's free to do should take you about 20 minutes to half an hour um, and uh, we'll make sure you've got the link on that and don't don't take it from me. Our old friend uh, Rick Hughes, the former CPO of um, P&G, uh, was a big fan of using it. Um, and and I'm sure you all know P&G have a have a fantastic supply management program. So uh, so I will encourage you uh, when we send you the slides. There is a hyperlink here, and you can just click on that button, and it will take you straight to the piece. Um, so if if there's any questions, I'm just going to open the uh, question panel and just see. Oops, what have I just done there? So I'm just going to open the question panel. First question we've got, um, and thank you, Greg. If you commit a business case to benefits how do you track back very good question um, to realization on that so Greg we we encourage our clients to make it um, so, so if, if we follow the journey through 
for the top suppliers, the, the holy grail is getting them to a joint account plan. And we encourage our clients then in that part of that joint account plan is to make a KPI in terms of the value that you're taking out of, of I'll say the relationship, but it's really the mutual business. So, so how are you kind of making that more efficient and where is the, the, the money coming out of it? So for me, that's, that's how you would track it. It becomes a key KPI for the relationship um, and you would, um, you would track it track it like that again if if that's not clear and i haven't um haven't kind of answered that then um uh again greg i'm happy to to uh to spend more time on that i'll just uh will the slides be available yes they will be available um and a recording as well so you will be able to get a recording of this uh, read the reports link. Is there a link to download all? Um, uh, sorry, David, there isn't. Um, the books um, we could probably we could probably help you out there, but um, the books are fairly hefty. I would encourage you really to start at the latest one uh, and maybe just grab one or two of the others. Um, you know, uh, our thinking does evolve over 13 years, so certainly the latest one incorporates the, that. Um, so, sorry, let me keep going. Um, we keep hearing feedback such as, how is this different to the business managing the suppliers with no program, it's their job. What were your quick response to this so one of the things is the i still think the business needs to own the relationship um there might be some relationships that we take a lead on when they're cross business unit or cross geography but really it's pointless having the argument over who owns ibm with the cio um so for me we in procurement should own the process the governance the policy the procedure the training, the technology, but the relationship doesn't really matter as long as they follow our rules. Um, so for me, that's that that's kind of a key point. Um, the big part on this is that we're doing it in a structured, consistent manner, and it's all focused around making the business more efficient, driving more value, less risk, more innovation in it. So getting to those joint account plans is pretty key for me. Um, but uh, Liza, if, if I haven't answered that question again, I'm more than happy to spend time on that. Um, another quick question here, our procurement function is still in its infancy, only a year old. The focus to date has been on implementing P2P processes. In terms of prioritization, would you argue introducing supplier management is more important than introducing governance around a new sourcing exercise? Well, here's an interesting thing. If you look at the percentage sourced of your total spend, generally most organizations won't get anywhere near resourcing 30 to 40% of their total spend per annum. And if you're doing that, you're doing really well. Whereas you've got to manage 100% of your spend all the time. So that's one thing. The second one is the business, um, really cares about kind of making sure they keep the lights on and the operational side of things. Do they really worry about different tenders and things like that? There'll be some special ones, but most of it is is kind of more um, more around how you helping them keep their, their lights on. So if the supply management's not working, then you'll certainly hear about it. And then the last bit I'll say is if you don't do it, then you get these quasi supply management groups popping up. So you'll get vendor management and IT or legal will go and do something or marketing will go and do something. Um, and it becomes a bit of a land grab. So for me, if, if I look at what are your customers looking at, do they really care about an RFP? They probably care that their supplier is doing what they need it to do and growing from that. So, so I would probably encourage looking looking at life from what your customers need. And in my mind, I think supply management is going to be a bit more strategic or important than 
than kind of governance around your your um, P2P process. I've answered Greg's question. Uh, Jonathan, do we have any tips on sustainability? We've got a whole topic on sustainability. It's it's huge at the moment. Um, it's really interesting uh, for me around supplier management. It's about how do you drive some of your sustainability criteria down through the organization. We've picked a few key topics that we think are critical. One is around modern slavery and making sure your organization um, and, their and your suppliers are doing the right thing there. Um, and again, there's a whole discussion I could have on that. Um, another one is around diverse and inclusive suppliers. We think that's a key point when you do your segmentation, when you, when you do your selection, when you do your management of suppliers. The DNI suppliers do take a different view, um, and we're just launching a training course around that. So you will see on our website some DNI training uh, purely focused on on that. So so we do think that there are particular areas in kind of ESG that that are really pertinent to supply management. Um, but again, probably a topic for a whole webinar on that one. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Nick, what industry do you see? Um, uh, that's an easy one to answer. It's generally fast moving consumer goods or, or if we're in America, CPG. So the, the people, well, we've worked with Kellogg's for about 12 years love what they do you know if, if if anyone wants a good benchmark there's one um they they are um one of the global leaders in this um but certainly their pairs in in fast moving consumer goods are pretty good i mentioned rick hughes um you know we've we've done a bit of work in the past with unilever um and, and when they set their program up and they have a good good program mars uh, same thing so there are some good examples in that CPG uh, area. Uh, uh, hopefully I'm gonna get through most of your questions. Um, I know we're slightly over time, um, so I will try and, and we will come back to you because I think we're, we're kind of running out of time here. Um, so we'll come back to people. How do, do you have metrics that demonstrate the benefits of SRM at the exit of relationships. Dave, happy to discuss that one offline. Um, but yes, we have we have looked at that as well. Um, so David, we can we can pick that up uh, outside of this. I, I'm sorry I haven't managed to get to all of the questions in the time allowed. Um, but uh, hopefully you've managed to get quite a lot out of the session. Uh, I'd love to pick up with any one of you afterwards if you've got specific questions um, so please please let me know and i'll encourage you to do the survey as well so thank you so much for your time i'm sorry i've run slightly over time um, but but please do reach out and uh, and come back to me if if you've got further questions or if i haven't answered your question and i got my fingers crossed that agatha did actually manage to listen to to all of this as well so um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I'll look forward to hopefully speaking to most of you in the next uh, few weeks.